Welcome to Fast Keto. I'm your host, Ketogenic Girl. Did you know that your body can actually be either a sugar burner or a fat burner? On this podcast, we talk all about how to make your body a fat-burning, fat-fueled machine and engaging your full metabolic flexibility. I'm Vanessa Spina. I am a sport nutrition specialist a biomedical science student at U of T, and I am the author of the best-selling cookbook, Keto Essentials, available on Amazon and creator of the Ketogenic Girl Challenge Program. And I am obsessed with optimizing our health through all these different biohacks, ketogenesis, intermittent fasting, all of these amazing tools that center around making the body a fat-adapted, fat-fueled machine. With this in mind, I present interviews to you with biomedical scientists, physicians, and people from all around the world who have experienced remarkable results from following a low-carb or ketogenic diet and getting their body into ketogenesis. So I hope you guys enjoy these interviews with this goal in mind. Hey guys, welcome back to Fast Keto. I'm so happy that you guys are here for this episode. We're going to talk all about something really interesting which is how eating fat helps us to burn fat. Now, this is something that's been around sort of in the low carb and keto space. There's been a lot of myths about it. There's been some inaccurate information. There's been people totally dismissing that it's a thing, but there is an actual mechanism that we can point to in science that explains why one type of fat in particular does this. And I'm really excited to start delving into the topic of fat more, dietary fat and body fat. Body fat's kind of always a recurring theme on the podcast, but I've really been focused in the past year, I would say, on the podcast on protein. I've interviewed a lot of protein scientists, really dive deep into eating more protein, what it can do for us, and what it can do for us, particularly with regards to body recomposition. And now I want to delve in a little bit more into the fat side of things. It's endlessly fascinating if you are interested in the topic of burning body fat, of being fat fueled, of ketogenesis, of basically keto. It's really the most important macronutrient when it comes to keto because you're being fat fueled and whether that's a combination of dietary fat and body fat or one or the other, it is a really important macro. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that today and also kind of the idea that eating fat will prevent you from burning your body fat, which is not accurate. (laughs) It's not fully true. So I'm going to dive into that a little bit more so we can understand it better together. On this podcast, we talk a lot about optimizing our bodies for wellness and along with that goes balancing our hormones. There are so many different hormones that play in our body and one of the most important ones is cortisol. Now, one of the things that I recently learned is how much the impact of artificial light plays on our hormones and can create disruption in our hormones. It can create too much cortisol in our bodies if we are getting too much artificial light coming in through our screens, which a lot of us, much like myself, are on for a large part of the day. I recently learned about this amazing company called Blue Blocks. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X. Blue Blocks have three types of lenses that offer complete light protection from day to night evidence-based, really stylish looking products that actually improve our lives. They launched three signature glasses. They have Sleep Plus, Summer Glow, and Blue Light, and they also have a Remedy Sleep Mask. I recently had the opportunity to interview their founder, Andy Mant, on the show, and we had such a fascinating discussion about circadian rhythms, about hormonal balance and function, and how getting a lot of exposure to blue light can really disrupt our hormones by generating too much cortisol, which can lead to higher blood glucose, poorer sleep, not getting all that restorative deep sleep and repair that happens at night because we're not getting enough melatonin. I really love using their glasses. I've started using them in the evening when I'm working late 
and it really makes a huge difference. Plus the glasses are really, really stylish looking and chic. You gotta go check them out. They offer non-prescription, prescription, and reader's glasses, and you can even send them your own favorite frames to have their world-class lenses installed into them. Now, what's really, really cool, too, is that every pair of glasses that Blue Block sells, they will donate a pair of reading glasses to the charity Restoring Vision. Now, Andy is generously offering 15% off to listeners of Fast Keto. If you go to blueblocks.com and use the code Fast Keto, that link is blueblocks, B L U B L O X.com. Go check them out. Let me know if you try them, and I would love to hear your results. All right, guys. So, Let's start off this episode talking about some research into different fats and different fatty acids. So the last two episodes, if you've been listening, I had Dr. Kate Shanahan on my 200th episode on Monday. And then last week, I did a primer to that episode talking about oils and fats. Oils really are lipids or fats that are liquid at room temperature and fats are solid at room temperature. But the main difference between the two is fats. The ones that we want to eat tend to be more solid at room temperature because they have more saturated bonds. And that means their chemical structure makes it less easy for them to get damaged because little oxygen molecules can't get in there because the bonds are all saturated. They're all full. So what happens with these oils, which we talked about on the last two episodes, some of the vegetable oils, especially, which are factory refined and processed, the amount of processing that takes place to even make these oils edible is insane. (laughs) You can read more about it in Dr. Kate Shanahan's book, but she talks about the processes that have to take place, the heating, the reheating, the bleaching, like all of these different processes just to make these oils edible because they're not intended for human consumption. And one of the things that we didn't really talk about on the podcast is what happens when we ingest these oils. We talked about how they go into your cells and that the mitochondria have a difficult time burning them. But I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into that and talk about why these oils really are not recognized by our bodies in a natural way because these oils have been so modified that they actually aren't really being detected as fat when we eat them. And this is what this recent study, I posted it yesterday on my Instagram at Ketogenic Girl. It was a really interesting study called Dietary Steric Acid regulates mitochondria in vivo in humans. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the mitochondria and steric acid. But one of the things that was so interesting about this research is that our bodies detect things when we eat them. So when we eat glucose, our bodies have certain sensing technology where they sense the glucose, they release insulin, through the pancreas, the beta cells in the pancreas secrete that insulin. When insulin falls low enough after a meal, the alpha cells in our pancreas secrete glucagon, which pushes blood glucose out so that we can have more energy between meals for our brain mostly. When we eat protein, pathway called mTOR is signaled. So there's certain sensing technology in our bodies that They detect glucose, release insulin. They detect a lack of glucose, release glucagon. Detect amino acids from eating protein, signal mTOR. And mTOR is this pathway that is basically our growth pathway. It's an anabolic pathway to build muscle, to repair tissue. And it's signaled by amino acids basically entering the bloodstream and muscle protein synthesis where the amino acid leucine in particular, once it reaches a certain level in our blood, about around three grams of leucine in our blood that triggers muscle protein synthesis. But of course, there should be a mechanism or technology for our bodies to sense fat. 
And we want our bodies to sense that we've eaten fat because of the hormone leptin. Leptin is our fullness hormone. It's what makes us feel full after a meal. So a lot of people who struggle with insatiable hunger, they don't eat enough fat in their diet. And because of that, they don't really get proper leptin signaling because leptin is primarily signaled by the ingestion of fats. But it really also matters what kinds of fats because let's talk about stearic acid, for example. This is also known as C18, refers to its biochemical structure. And this fat is found in certain foods in particular. And there's something about this fat, this fatty acid that actually tells the body that we have consumed fats that there's lipids or fats, and there's this sensing network that detects them. And this sensing mechanism then encourages this process known as mitochondrial fusion. So I'll talk about that in really simple terms a little bit later. But basically, it helps us to burn more fat because it tells the body, hey, we've taken in fat, it's time to burn some of this fat that we've eaten. And It's a signaling mechanism that is really determined by this fatty acid from steric acid, which is found mostly in steak, dairy fat, cocoa butter, which is mostly consumed as chocolate. Not many people eat cocoa butter on its own, although you can. There's a lot of it in white chocolate. I would say it's predominant ingredient in white chocolate, but it's also in a lot of just dark chocolate itself. And it's also found in poultry and fish, tallow, beef tallow, lard, and butter. So in beef, pork, lamb, and veal, steric acid ranges from 9 to 16% of total fat. And I also posted on Instagram a chart with all the different food sources of steric acid. So The researcher said, we found a surprisingly robust response with C18 or steric acid ingestion, causing fusion of mitochondria in 90% of all tested subjects. Increased levels of circulating C18 lipids are associated with reduced blood pressure, improved heart function, and reduced cancer risk. Unlike other saturated fatty acids, And contrary to the general belief that saturated fatty acids are harmful, C18 appears to have some beneficial effects on human health. So this is what the researchers stated in their study, that when people ingested these foods that were high in this steric acid, this fatty acid, known as steric acid, that it caused this process of mitochondrial fusion. Now, All you need to know about mitochondrial fusion is two things. One, it makes your cells more efficient at burning energy and generating energy. And two, it's kind of like autophagy in the sense that, you know, when autophagy happens, it's like your body cells clearing out all the recycling, all the garbage, taking the trash out, gobbling up all of those misfolded organelles in the cell. It's basically our internal recycling process, clearing all that out. Now, mitochondrial fusion happens when there's some errors in DNA in one of the mitochondria. And the mitochondria are little energy powerhouses in our cells. They're the energy factories in our cells. They're kind of shaped like a bean. And when one of them has incorrect DNA in it, it can fuse with another mitochondria to generate a larger mitochondria overall that is more efficient. And it kind of makes up for the fact that there's some less efficient energy being produced from that one mitochondria. So it's like, you know, two people (laughs) running in a marathon and one twists their ankle and the other person comes along and you know, ties their waist around the other person's waist and keeps running. So it kind of evens things out. So then that, you know, together they can finish the race and generate more power because that other mitochondria fused with it. 
The other thing that's interesting about mitochondrial fusion is that they noticed it goes up, that there's more fat burning happen, which can lead to feeling more satisfied, more having more satiety. But also that in research where people were obese and gaining weight, they noticed that mitochondrial fusion went way down. So it's kind of a marker for a number of things, but one of the main ones being a lowered ability to oxidize fat when uh, there's impaired mitochondrial metabolism. So it's really important to have efficient mitochondria in our cells. We want to have as much mitochondria as possible. You probably heard Dr. Ben Bickman talk about brown fat versus white fat. And brown fat burns more calories because there's more mitochondria in it. And our muscle cells and tissues have the most mitochondria. And when we build our muscles, we recruit more mitochondria in those muscles. And that's why they burn more energy. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn. And that's because your muscle tissue has more mitochondria, more energy factories in them. So this is a really interesting study. You can look, I put the link and I put the whole study on my Instagram at Ketogenic Girl if you want to look into the study itself and read it. It's really, really interesting how they did the study and basically they also found all these other great benefits of it. Like they said, increased, you know, circulating steric acid was associated with reduced blood pressure, improved heart function, and reduced cancer risk. Now, this made me realize a couple of things. You know, I talk a little bit about the magic of keto and carnivore and how it mostly comes from the fact that you're prioritizing more food that has a higher thermic effect. So protein being the highest with about a 30% thermic effect. You're prioritizing those foods more than relying on just highly processed foods. You're eating more whole foods that your body has to expend energy also breaking down. But I think this is one of the reasons that the carnivore diet gets such great results for people and why keto gets such great results for people over just your average low calorie, high carb diet where, you know, most people don't really stick to them long term. Whereas many people, once they've adopted keto, they tend to stick with it for a long time, I would say. You guys know how much I love ButcherBox because they make it easy to get high quality, humanely raised meat that you can trust. Every month they deliver 100% grass fed and grass finished beef, free range organic chicken, heritage breed pork, and wild Alaskan salmon directly to your door and shipping is free. I love using ButcherBox because it saves me so much time from having to go to the grocery store and plan. It's just so easy and convenient to use. You can choose from four curated boxes, including a mix of high quality, grass-fed, grass-finished beef, all of their different proteins. Each box comes with at least nine to 11 pounds of meat, which is enough for 24 individual sized meals. The meat is frozen at the peak of freshness in individual vacuum sealed packs. This makes it so convenient because they deliver right to your door on dry ice and that's one less trip to the grocery store. They have high quality, humanely raised meat that has never been given antibiotics or hormones. What I love the most is that it's affordable because by taking out the middleman at grocery stores, ButcherBox is able to buy meat at a lower cost and pass those savings along to you. Their boxes start at $1.29 a month, which works out to less than $6 per meal. And I am all about budgeting and meal planning, and this just makes it so much easier. And shipping is free nationwide. Now, right now, they have a fantastic offer. Probably my favorite so far. New subscribers will receive free ground beef for life. That's right. If you sign up today, ButcherBox will send you two pounds of 100% grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef free in every box for the life of your subscription. Plus, listeners of Fast Keto will get an additional 20% off on their first box. That is a lot of Taco Tuesdays, and I love a good Taco Tuesday and ground beef. This is a limited time offer. If you want to take advantage of it for it and get two pounds of 100% grass-fed beef free in every box 
for the life of your subscription plus $20 off your first box. Go to butcherbox.com slash fast keto or enter the promo code fast keto at checkout. That's butcherbox.com slash fast keto or enter promo code fast keto at checkout. And let me know how you liked trying them out. I would love to hear about it. It's really interesting that the fatty acids that are found in particularly in animal fats and in the saturated fats like tallow and butter and cocoa butter and milk and dairy fats and just all mostly all animal fats, especially the red meat, although there is some poultry and fish as well. I think that it's really interesting that the fatty acids here tell the body that you have ingested fat and you should be burning fat and that this doesn't happen with the vegetable oils because the vegetable oils tend to be so manipulated from their original form. They talk about this in the study that the body doesn't really have the same effect. It doesn't have the same sensing of fats And they kind of talk a little bit about how this is why other types of fats tend to get stored on the body, whereas the steric fatty acid, it tends to be burned for energy. And that's why, you know, we see people getting so shredded on carnivore diets and also people doing really well on keto when they really do whole foods approach that's really animal based and meat based. And I think that this is a huge reason why. Uh, the other reason why I think carnivore is so magical, so effective for so many people is the lack of vegetable and seed oils. And again, this goes back to you're basically replacing all these fats with fats that your body actually can recognize and, you know, go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> we just got some fat. Now it's time to burn fat. So basically what this study shows us is that Animal fats are the ones that are going to have all these added benefits to them. They're going to help us with burning fat, with telling the body to burn fat, with sensing that we have fat in our cells. We have energy available to be burned. And this is also going to help us oxidize our own body fat by making our cells more efficient through this mitochondrial fusion. And that was the biggest thing that they noticed in the study participants. Uh, This is a human study. It's not done on rodents and it's really, really fascinating. So this is really how the body can burn more fat when we eat more fat. Now, naturally, people who do keto diets, they burn more fat partly because they're eating more fat. You just eat more dietary fat when you're on keto because it's your preferred energy source as opposed to high carb diets where the preferred energy source are is carb. Our carbohydrates. So a lot of people have either championed the idea that eating fat helps you burn fat or totally dismissed it. And I'll say that this particular study really points to the fact that eating fat helps you burn fat and it helps you to burn the fat that you're eating and it will help you burn the fat on your body as well if you're in a caloric deficit. And I think that's really the main thing is that eating fat will help you burn fat, A, if it's the right kind of fat, so the fats that we discussed today, and B, if you're creating some kind of deficit where you are burning more energy than you are taking in. If you eat at maintenance, you still may get some weight loss because you still may be creating a deficit because of the thermic effect of protein Fat doesn't really have that much of a thermic effect because fatty acids can just be broken down and cross the cell membrane because it's basically a fatty membrane. So the, the, the fats can just cross right into fat cells, whereas, uh, glucose and amino acids, they require transporters to get into our cells. So there isn't really much of a thermic effect when it comes to fat. Carbs have somewhere between a 6% to 15%. I usually average it around somewhere between 10 to 15%. 
but the protein definitely has the highest with about 30%. So even at maintenance calories, you could still likely be getting a deficit. And I think that's why people lose weight without having to quote unquote cut calories when they're doing keto. But I do still think that in order to lose weight, there has to be some kind of deficit. And if you're eating as much energy after removing the extra calories you lose from the thermic effect, if you're eating as much as you're taking in, your body will most likely maintain. And that's not a bad thing because sometimes to lose weight, you need to go into maintenance mode for a little while or boost your calories higher so that your hormones can really be thriving, functioning well, and your body does not feel like it's in any kind of stressful state. And by creating a little bit of maintenance for a while or boosting your metabolic rate a little bit with higher calorie days, you can then take sort of a break and then go back to a lowered caloric intake to create a deficit that is sustainable for you at an amount that you could maintain for a long time and then maybe gradually do a, a reverse diet later. But if you want to lose weight and lose fat, you're most likely going to have to create a caloric deficit and you can lose weight consistently at as little as 10 to 15% of a caloric deficit. It doesn't have to be that big. If you take diet breaks, you're still going to get the same results at the end of the day. Um, I have a protein scientist that's coming on the podcast soon who just did some research on this showing some study participants who did a diet with no breaks and study participants who did the same diet but with taking diet breaks. So they would take a day off or take a week off every once in a while and they got the same results. So diet breaks won't interfere with your fat loss. They can be beneficial in making it easier for you to get the results that you want to get. That means having a caloric deficit to lose weight at a higher caloric intake. So if you've dieted down yourself to a really small amount of food, you can reverse diet and increase your calories up to a really healthy amount and then maybe cut 10, 15, 20% of that and you'll be able to lose weight in a really sustainable long-term way. And that sustainable fat loss is going to be much more long-term and will last as opposed to results from short-term weight loss, which never really seems to last. And the protein scientist I'm talking about also has some research on that as well. So weight loss really should be something gradual, but you can't lose weight if you are constantly at a reduced caloric level. You're constantly fasting. You're constantly restricting if you've been dieting for decades or for years without ever taking like a year off or some time off just to let your body maintain. I mean, this is the best time to do it during our current situation because none of us are really going anywhere. This is a great time to take a diet break to boost your metabolic rate, improve your sleep, improve your health, improve your hormones, and just give yourself a break to just be and let your body thrive with a good amount of protein and a good amount of energy. And prioritizing protein and prioritizing these healthy natural fats, they signal to the body to burn fat. Our body recognizes them. Our mitochondria can make more energy from these kinds of fats, these fatty acids that are found in steak, in dairy fat, in cocoa butter, in poultry and fish, in tallow, in butter. These kinds of saturated fats our bodies recognize as fats. They help us to burn fat. And that's why it's great to get your energy from these steric acid, fatty acid, steric acid. It's great to get your energy from fat. It's going to help your body burn fat. This research actually proves it. And if you're getting your energy from fat, for the most part, a little bit from carbohydrate, 
mostly, you know, the vegetables. If you choose to, if you don't want to, don't be triggered by the fact that I said vegetables or salad or whatever, because carbs and fats are the same thing. They're both carbohydrates and hydrates of carbon. Molecularly, they're just energy. They are cells generate energy from the bonds, these higher energy bonds when they break them down. And you're really just talking about energy. There's good carbs and bad carbs. There's good fats and bad fats. But where you choose to get your energy from is up to you. Ultimately, if you like to get your energy from fat, mostly go for it. You can also get all these other benefits from it and you can get your body into ketosis if you want to, which comes with a lot of great benefits. If you're someone that likes to get all your energy from carbs and a little bit of fat while prioritizing protein, do that. Do whatever is sustainable for you. If eating high carb works for you and you enjoy eating whole carbs and getting your energy from healthy carbs, I say go for it. It's whatever is going to be sustainable for you. If you're interested just in fat loss, you can do that by creating a caloric deficit with prioritizing protein. I always like to say one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. And then with the carbs and fats, just figure out what you like best. If you like to moderate carb and moderate fats and prioritize your protein, do that. Do whatever works for you. It doesn't have to be keto. I like the low carb approach because I think you get all these metabolic advantages that you don't get as much with carbs. And I like having stable blood sugar for myself because my hunger is really balanced, I guess. Like I don't feel these hunger swings from high carb diets, which make my blood sugar go up and down and it's always rising and falling. Whereas with protein and fat, my blood sugar stays really stable. I do have some healthy carbs in there, some salads. I like to have some vegetables with dinner. I like to make like some different Thai like stir fries and and different keto recipes for my cookbook and meal plans. I love to do those kinds of things with healthy proteins. It just brings some variety and flavor into my life, but I get a lot of flavor from fat as well. And I would say my main source of energy is fat. I get most of it from fat, some from carbs, and I always prioritize protein. And I think this is fantastic research. I love seeing more research coming out like this. I hope we see more and more of it because it's so interesting to understand these fatty acids. And it makes so much sense that our bodies would have this built in, built in sensing technology to alert ourselves to the fact that fatty acids have been ingested. It's time to burn those fatty acids and burn body fat as well. And I think that this research totally supports that. It shows that eating fat helps our bodies burn fat. We don't need to overeat fat if we're trying to lose weight, but remember that going too low in fat is going to negatively impact your hormones going below about 15% of your total calories coming from fat will have a negative impact on your hormones. You don't have to go excessively over 15%. Going way over 15% does not have a higher positive effect on hormones, but going below 15% fat will. And I know that there's a lot of trends out there right now to prioritize protein intake, I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big proponent of that, but I still get my energy from a high fat diet. And sometimes I moderate fat a little bit. I bring in a little bit of more healthy carbs, but for the most part, I get the majority of my energy from healthy fats because I love being in ketosis and having these metabolic advantages and having really stable blood sugar. But you can do whatever you choose. You do you (laughs) as my friend. Sarah Carnivore Yogi uh, likes to say in her videos, you do you, figure out what works for you and whatever is going to be sustainable for you long term because that's what it really comes down to with long term success is sustainability long term. So figure out what you like to do, what works for you. 
And if you are interested in learning more about reverse dieting, I'm working on a full program for that. I'm hoping to have it out by Christmas and working on all of the recipes and the designs for that. It's a longer program with boosting your calories gradually up and up and up and then maintaining for a while and then doing a cut, which hopefully (laughs) will time well with next summer. 2021 hopefully will look a lot different than the last summer, but we'll see how it all goes. So thank you guys so much for being here, for listening. I appreciate you all so, so much. And I just want to say yesterday I was on Amazon because I was doing a review for Dr. Kate Shanahan's book. And I went to go look at my cookbook, Keto Essentials, and I just started crying reading all of your reviews. I really... I don't like to go on there much because I'm scared of what people will say. Sometimes I'm scared of feedback and I just started crying. I've seen the reviews before, but sometimes I'll just sit there and just read them. And it makes me so emotional because you guys are so incredibly kind. And it just means so, so much to me that you guys even take a moment out of your day to write me something so lovely and so appreciative and I just appreciate you guys so so much I love receiving your feedback on the episodes when you tag me in your stories when you tell me your insights and takeaways and your thank yous for this podcast because I feel so blessed and lucky that I get to do this every week because it's my favorite thing to do I just love being here with you I love keeping you guys company. I love sharing these ideas, new research, new insights, and all of this with you. It makes me so happy and brings me so much joy. So thank you guys so much. And thank you to everyone who bought the carnivore meal plans. I love seeing your posts about them. I love seeing your excitement and enthusiasm about them. Really, really appreciate you guys so, so much. I'm excited to share some exciting new things that are coming as well. I'll be sharing more in the coming months, but I have some really exciting new projects I'm developing as well. And I can't wait to share them with you guys because they're all for you. So until the next episode, I'm wishing you a wonderful day, a fat fuel day, get your steric acid in and fuel your body with all that amazing steric acid. All right. Love you guys. Bye for now. And thanks for listening. A few disclaimers. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice as I am not a qualified healthcare provider. The information presented on this podcast is for educational purposes only. Ketogenic Girl is not qualified to provide medical advice. Consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to this podcast. Prior to beginning a ketogenic diet, you should undergo a full health screening with your physician to confirm that a keto diet is suitable for you and to rule out any conditions or contraindications that may pose risks or that are incompatible with a ketogenic diet. A keto diet may or may not be appropriate for you if you have any kind of health condition, whether known to you or unknown, so you must consult your physician to find this out. Anyone under the age of 18 should consult with their physician and their parents or legal guardians.